Welcome to Barcelona and I love cars with a difference. Yes, I've escaped the ever enthusiastic attention of Paul because this is a trip which, to be honest, is a bit out of his depth. Because it's a race track test. And it's not just any sort of race car either. Whether you like it or not, us petrol heads have to accept there's going to be more and more electric cars on our roads and on our tracks. Well, I don't think their domination is going to come quite as soon as the EV evangelists believe, although well, perhaps it might arrive a bit sooner than it's taken to build this cathedral. When it comes to electric racing, Formula E still lives in its own world of hype, attracting manufacturers who need to be seen to be green, but still not really wowing spectators. I drove the original car. Not only does it not have enough power to excite the driver, it also demands copious amounts of lifting and coasting and swapping cars just to get to the finish line. The second generation of Formula E arrives at the end of the year, with one car having to make the distance and power increase to 270 horsepower, with bursts of 340 available for short periods. But it remains to be seen whether this will finally raise the pulse of the spectators. Then there's Jaguar with their support series with 20 identical I-Pace models, 400 horsepower. But quite how they think they can get these medium-sized SUVs around the tight confines of a Formula E track, I've no idea. World Rallycross is also going electric in 2020, and I can see that this is where electric might work the best. But if dirt and dust isn't your thing, how about an electric GT series? Because that's what I'm here in Barcelona to find out about. A race series for Teslas. And here it is, the Tesla Electric GT. What they've done is taken a standard 135,000 pound Tesla P100DL and strip off all the aluminium bodywork to replace it with a flax fibre composite. And this has the same strength as carbon composite, but it's semi-transparent so you can put LED lights in it. Of course, there's a big racing splitter on the front, a big rear wing at the back. They've got a wider bodywork, all made of that lightweight composite to hide the wider track, the racing suspension, racing brakes, Pirelli slick tyres. And of course, the interior has been stripped out as well. The seats have all gone. There's a rollover cage put in, racing seats. And incredibly, they've managed to take 500 kilograms of weight off the standard car. That's half a tonne lighter. However, one thing that hasn't changed is the iconic Google screen remains. So if you took that out, you'd never get anything to work. Also staying as standard is the drivetrain, which means I've only got a ludicrous 790 horsepower to play with. Time to get on the track, I think. Now, what I didn't tell the Tesla people is that I haven't driven around Barcelona since I drove a Jaguar Formula One car about 20 years ago. So I sort of know where the corners are, but um, this is weird. I drove the Formula E, of course. The Formula E was silent, and this just whooshes off down to the first corner. But with the Formula E, at least I had the noise of the air around my ears. In this, there's a bit of pillar noise but not too much wind, obviously. This is tight. I tell you, watch Formula One for so long, you forget how tight some of these corners are. Whoosh up this long turn three, and the car feels glued straight away. Now, the only other trouble here at Barcelona, we picked one of the hottest days of the year so far. It's about 30 degrees. So the biggest problem with electric cars is this battery maintenance. And at the moment, this is the very first day this car's run. I'm the first media person to even drive this car. And they're still getting teething problems a little bit with keeping battery temperatures cool enough, because it'll just lose power. Try a bit of curb. Well, I doesn't mind that. Doesn't mind curb at all. Try a bit of other curb. Doesn't mind that. It's this weird, silent feeling down in the brake ears. Brakes good. I've stopped well before the corner. With the weight of these batteries, braking is obviously a critical thing they've got to sort out as well. Feed in the power. Instant torque, of course, however wide the throttle is, there's torque. Now we have these tricky, tricky chicanes 
responsive, the nose turns in. Of course, I'm nowhere near the limit yet. But with left foot braking, I can break into the corner, find the apex, out for this famous last corner, onto the famous Barcelona Strait, going for full throttle. And all I hear is the noise of the wind as we fill more and more speed. Start looking for a breaking point somewhere down here. I think I'm going to try sooner rather than later. And I've chickened that way too soon. When you get honoured with the chance to drive these cars, you're very aware of the responsibility that you're looking after someone's pride and joy. Long, building up a bit more speed this time. You can feel the G-force building up big, slick Pirelli tyres giving plenty of grip. <laughs> I'm just getting used to the fact I don't really do anything. I just either press the accelerator or the brake, turn the steering wheel back on the power, and this could be a lot of fun with 19 other Teslas all out there. Unfortunately, after just a lap and a half, the heat was having its effect and the power was dropping. And we've overstepped our heat. We're cruising back. Well, there's still a lot of people queuing up to have rides in this Tesla. So it's my time is sadly over all too soon. Bump the curb into this final chicane. Let pass some Rorty little noisy, look how noisy that is, how horrible the noisy car. If you want quiet motor racing, here we have it, it's a Tesla GT. Well, my brief acquaintance with the Tesla electric GT is over. The fans are out to try and cool those batteries. And this is the biggest problem electric racing faces. As soon as the batteries overheat, the power disappears. Now this is the very first day's running. It's a media day, it's blazingly hot in Barcelona and the overheating, the power drops after a couple of laps. It's something they're working on, they know about it. But for today, it's just media passenger rides or for one lucky person, a drive. Is it brilliant? Well, I can't really tell you now. It felt solid, the steering weight was good, the brakes were good. But until they can supply that full 780 horsepower for a whole 30 minutes, and maybe a bit of noise, it's hard to predict how successful this formula is gonna be. But now it just creeps out of the pit lane. Oh.